People often say they want to date edgy, be edgy, and hang with edgy. I don't. I don't like edgy. I am not edgy. I'm as edgy as a boiled egg. I am not into edgy. In fact, it's funny in my house. My wife's edgy. I'm not really edgy. My kids are edgy. I'm not really edgy. But a lot of people say they like edgy. They like the idea of edgy, but they don't really like edgy. ESPN, we're going to put that show on Barstool on our network. It's going to be, whoa, I, I'm not comfortable with Barstool. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Oscars, we're going to put Seth MacFarlane on. Seth MacFarlane is edgy. We, whoa, you offended everybody. Whoa. The New York Giants for the last four years have never been comfortable with Odell Beckham. And there's a reason they've never been comfortable. They like the idea of being married to Odell Beckham. But they have been, and they've been uncomfortable. The New York Giants, in a city of stars, are the most boring great franchise ever. Four Super Bowls. They even got the most boring Manning in the family. I mean, if you look at the history of the New York Giants... Look at their stars, Mark Bavaro, Phil McConkey, David Tyree, Jeff Hostetler, Phil Sims. <sighs> anybody, anybody got an espresso? Even your stars are boring. Odell Beckham is everything the New York Giants are not. Flashy, crazy, unpredictable. I mean, if I say Odell Beckham and you start listing his, the things that come to your mind, one hand catch, the boat, blunt, model and blow in a hotel room in Paris, peeing in an end zone, proposing to Annette. That's his brand. And by the way, the Dallas Cowboys probably comfortable with it. LA Rams probably comfortable with it. A lot of teams comfortable. Miami Dolphins comfortable with it. The New York Giants are an accounting firm in cleats. It is the most boring, conservative, great franchise in American sports. In New York, usually your stars are like Walt Frazier, Ruth, Gehrig, A-Rod, Mantle. They're stars, right? The New York Giants stars, even they're boring. Great, but boring. But the story today, they want to make him the highest paid wide receiver in the league. And then, gang, you're really in a marriage. Every year, Notre Dame says they love Brian Kelly, but his face turns purple as he screams at a quarterback, and they're uncomfortable with Brian Kelly. And the Oscars thought they wanted Seth MacFarlane until they had Seth MacFarlane, and then he was too much. And ESPN wanted Barstool Sports, and then they had Barstool Sports, and they don't like it. And the Giants, for four years, have been completely uncomfortable with Odell Beckham. And now the story is, we're going to marry Odell. This is like the most conservative family marrying Marilyn Manson. Good luck. Because the idea of edgy, the idea of edgy is one thing. Married to edgy, committed to edgy, long-term relationship with edgy is quite another. This is something that was said yesterday. Everybody's talking about the Browns are going to be on hard knocks and how's it going to affect the team. And uh, I don't really care about that. I don't think that's good for a team, but I don't think the Browns are going to be great anyway. So I don't think it's going to be the difference between, you know, 10 and six and six and 10. I think this is a six win team. And uh, I mean, I don't love hard knocks for teams. I don't love Baker Mayfield doing documentaries like just do football. Before you, you know, before you're a rock star, just be a star, okay? Um, but anyway, the head coach, Hugh Jackson, said something, and it was unintentional. He by no means was trying to be critical. He was by no means trying to say what he said. I've done this. You've done this. You unintentionally say something, and the meaning of it comes out, lands differently for somebody else. He talked about Baker Mayfield not starting this year. And he said, listen, I've had two players here in the past who never played in the National Football League, and we put them out there and uh, didn't do anybody any good. So why take a guy who we know is going to be in a situation, he's our future, and put him in that situation? Of course, the problem is he's comparing him to Cody Kessler and Deshaun Kaiser. 
Does he think number one pick Baker Mayfield is comparable to Cody Kessler, the number 93 pick, and Deshaun Kaiser, the number 52 pick? Let me ask you something. If the Browns had drafted Cam Newton number one, 6'6", 250, led Auburn to a national title, do you believe Hugh Jackson would have globbed them all together Has there ever been a time in your life that you included Cody Kessler in a sentence with Cam Newton? Or 6'4", 228, Troy Aikman? Or 6'5", 230, Peyton Manning? This is what I've always said about Baker. He can play in the NFL, but he doesn't look, feel like a number one pick. He looks small. He's a two-time walk-on. Hugh Jackson came out and said, you know, we don't want to play him initially because I've, I've seen what happens when you put Cody Kessler out there. This is a number one pick. If Cam Newton, if Peyton Manning, John Elway, Dan Marino, 6'5", 230 guys were drafted number one, would you be lumping them into a sentence with Cody Kessler and Deshaun Kaiser, whose own college coach said, dude's not ready. I don't think this was intentional. I think it's the reality of the optics that Hugh Jackson sees Baker Mayfield, and he looks like Cody Kessler. He's six feet tall, 215, without a huge arm, can run around a little. Cody Kessler was a good high school basketball player. Remember when Sam Darnold last Sunday, was it? This past Sunday, Sam Darnold was standing next to Baker Mayfield on that documentary, and what did I say? Which one looks like a franchise quarterback? Who looks bigger? Who looks bigger and stronger? (laughs) Sam Darnold looks like a franchise quarterback. I saw a story yesterday. Sam Darnold's going to beat out Teddy Bridgewater and Josh McCown. They're already saying to Adam Schefter, yeah, he's going to be number one. Hugh Jackson inadvertently saying, you know, uh, Baker, Cody Kessler, it's all the same thing. That's what he's saying. I mean, again, Cam Newton, say what you want, the smile, the look, the size, the arm, the athletic ability. Cam Newton walks into a room you would not say, listen, I had Cody Kessler and Deshaun Kaiser here. I've seen what happens to them when they haven't played in the NFL. No, you'd say, have you seen Cam Newton? Have you seen John Elway? Have you seen Peyton Manning? Well, well, yeah, because no rookies have played in the NFL. That's the whole point of the draft. But if you're Peyton, if you're Cam, if you're Andrew Locke, if you're Carson Wentz, it's it's understood. Right, but Baker hasn't been walking around in platform shoes this whole time. Everybody knew how big he was when they took him number one overall. And this is what I've said. He doesn't look or feel like a number one pick. He looks and feels like Cody Kessler. Well, what it looks and sounds like is this wasn't Hugh Jackson's choice for number one overall. I mean, would you, when Vaughn Miller came into this league, Indomitian and Sue came into this league, they look different than other players. Would you have compared Vaughn Miller to the 93rd guy? You know, we like Vaughn Miller, but, uh, you know, I, I started the 93rd pick a couple of years ago in his first year. It just didn't, you know, Vaughn Miller, you don't make those comparisons. Indomitian and Sue broke into this league. You're like, yeah, he looks different than even the NFL guys. I'm telling you. Hugh Jackson's talking about Baker Mayfield like he's been running around in this Scooby-Doo villain costume or something this whole time. He just lumped him in with a couple of guys who are just guys. You just don't lump a number one pick in with guys. That's why he's a number one pick. Cody Kessler, you just put him in the same sentence. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.